Hey yo gamers, I'm Matt and this is Game Design Game, episode 2. We're going to build a game together, an interactive story game in which you influence the outcomes. Stay tuned and let's make games. Game Design Game. So when I was a kid there were some uh, books that I had where as you read along you could make a choice, the choice would tell you to flip to different pages in the book, and ultimately the story would unfold in, uh, in somewhat of a nonlinear fashion, at least with respect to the pages in the book. You could jump forward, jump back, and you could get to different endings based on the choices you made. Uh, today I want to capture that in a video form, where the player will watch videos, make choices, uh, follow links to different videos, and ultimately reach an, an ending video uh, based on the choices that they've made. All right, getting into it. This is a, a brand new game. I have done a little bit of thinking about it, but I've been trying to save most of the uh, thinking for capturing for this uh, video. So um, I haven't even really decided what to call this, but my uh, primary working title is Deviations. Um, or possibly diverge, or offshoot, branches, don't really know. Um, and maybe the uh, exploration will uh, help to solidify what name works best here. Okay, terrible subtitle, but uh, functional because this is the exploration phase. And functional is better than artistic uh, when trying to get your head wrapped around the concept. Um, so given choice driven video paths. Okay, so there are some core ideas I want to uh, explore in this game, and the primary is being choice-driven story with branching paths. Um, by which um, I just mean that the player will be making choices and they will get a different story depending on the choices they make. Um, I want multiple endings um, because if all of your choices lead to the same thing, then they probably didn't make terribly much difference along the way. Um, and another issue I need to think about is the uh, presentation. Um, So how do I uh, make this game uh, interesting without a support team? I don't have a team of actors. I don't have animators. Um, my own art skills are somewhat mediocre. So I need to give some thought to uh, what this is going to look like uh, being a video and all. I don't want to just show text on screen. I don't want to just read lines. So um, I'm going to come up with some something you can see that's a little more interesting than just text. Um, and obviously in a, uh, if this turned into something really successful and popular, uh, then we could add those things. It could either be an animated uh, story or it could be something acted out. But uh, in prototypes, that's uh, quite the luxury that I don't have.
So I'm going to call this my um, framework elements. And there's a little bit more I need to do with the exploration. And that's going to be to uh, think a little bit about uh, the first prototype. So since there's two aspects of uh, this deviations concept, one is the gameplay, which is choice branching to different videos. That's very simple in concept at least. But then there's the, uh, to, to make this into a prototype, I need a working example. And that example will need some sort of story. And that means potentially a setting, characters. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but uh, I want to explore some ideas here. Um, so I'll call this possible prototypes. Um, so for example, I thought of like a, uh, maybe a murder mystery where you play uh, different investigators, pursue clues, accuse suspects. And if you get to the end and you accuse someone correctly, that is a successful ending. Um, if you accuse incorrectly, uh, the game is over, but it is a failed ending. So that's one possibility. Um, a time loop story has um, the interesting features of like replaying the same scene multiple times with different choices. So a time loop prototype um, saves me on those presentation features um, because it essentially replays similar elements over and over again. Um, I can get more story with uh, less content. Um, so that's a bit of an advantage um, and might make a really good prototype for that uh, reason. I may come back and add to these later, but uh, those are my top two ideas right now. Um, and in the long run, if I wanted to make a, uh, a longer prototype, um, a more interesting, captivating story. Uh, there are many different types of stories that would work with this system. And these two I chose because I can picture them as being very um, compact for a uh, first attempt, first prototype, um, to kind of prove out the concept and to keep this particular video within a uh, manageable time frame. Moving on to the prototype phase, um, there'll be a lot of work that goes into this. I might even have to spread this out over multiple days, uh, depending on how elaborate I get with it. Um, but something I wanted to bring up before I get into the prototype is that uh, in order to make it interesting for you to play through this game, uh, I'm going to take some of the details of my prototype process, break them into a separate video, and put them at the, essentially hide them until you've played through the game at least once. And then there will be a link to do essentially the part two of uh, this episode. Um, and hopefully by doing so, you'll get to uh, play through the game once. I might even provide a shortcut so that you don't have to play through it if you don't like it, uh, especially if you get started and run into a dead end and don't find a successful path. Um, but I didn't want to uh, put all the information up front before you even have a chance to play it. So um, look down in the... Uh, text below to find out a link to get started uh, at playing this prototype. And, uh, and like I said, there will be another link to uh, skip over the prototype and just watch part two, which will get into more details about um, the prototyping process and how it leads to the playable prototype that I will uh, be putting together. So into the prototype, there is the uh, technical aspect of the design, which is going to, I believe, be fairly easy. Um, 
which is um, begin play in an intro video. Video introduces choice. Let me uh, do this as a choice offers a link to or sorry, each each choice offers a link to another video. Um, yeah, actually, this isn't even just part of the intro video. This is just the structure of every step along the way. Um, trail of links leads to conclusions. And the conclusion video will be considered either a success or a failure. Um, either one will end the story. And you can play again, or you can go backwards and take a different step near the end. Um, but this uh, technical structure is really quite straightforward. Um, so the links provided in uh, video detail text, but also use uh, overlay link cards when possible. So um, I'm kind of new to the uh, video creation scene, but I think I can uh, put some of these links actually on top of the video and uh, let people choose their branches literally on screen as they play. Um, but in any case, I will also include links in the details for each video uh, in case those link cards don't work or uh, if you're playing it on different uh, sites or mediums. Um, I just don't know. The, uh, the text version should work very easily. Um, so that's really it for the technical aspects of this prototype. There's uh, not a lot to be done there, technically. Um, where it's more tricky is in the... Um, First prototype story. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, do an outline for both types of stories, um, for both a um, time loop based prototype and a murder mystery based prototype. Um, I will do an outline for both of those, and uh, once I've done that, I'll have an idea of <clears throat> which one will be easier to implement for my first prototype. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So let's start with uh, the detective story. This was actually the first one I thought of, and I've already done a little bit of work in my head for it. So... Um, The setup is a dead body in a uh, in an isolated location, spooky manor house, for example, um, and player investigates 
the murder. So the aspects of this, the isolate, isolated location, isolated location, um, is to uh, constrain the uh, ability to uh, roam outside of prepared areas. Um, this is, you know, in video game terms, the difference between a you know, linear story and an open world story. Ah, uh, this is definitely not conducive to an open world style of play where you can just go anywhere and do anything you want because uh, I'd have to prepare all those videos. So uh, all the action takes place in a location uh, that there's no reason to leave. And uh, and at the same time, it should have a... Uh, relatively small number of uh, sub-locations or, you know, rooms essentially in the mansion. So this could be a spooky manor. It could be a, um, a train, right? It could be, um, well, I don't know. We'll go with the spooky manor concept. That's a staple of uh, murder mysteries. So this does give me an idea for a uh, possibly different story. I'm just going to pop back up to the exploration and make note of the third story type. Um, how to put the ghost or monster to rest in a haunted house type scenario. Which a, a spooky manner made me think of that. So I wanted to jot that down. That might be a different um, story approach I could take. Uh, in any case, back to our detective story. So here's where I get into the parts that I want to uh, put at the end after you've played the game. So I want to work out a uh, prototype story based on a time loop uh, similar to Groundhog Day. Um, and the reason I like this concept is that uh, I may be able to leverage my content uh, very efficiently. Uh, because as the story progresses, I get to replay scenes, um, and hopefully I don't have to modify them too heavily, but just um, allow different choices um, along the way. So as I get into this time loop story, um, a series of choices with only... With many that set the player back in time. I'm going to say back in time and not necessarily back to the start. Um, I do still want some sort of um, pressure to uh, succeed within or to succeed or fail within a certain number of loops. Um, I don't want there to be just one correct path um, and you can try all of the others infinitely until you get to it. Um, I do somewhat want multiple paths to success and um, and I want there essentially to be a, the equivalent of a timeout failure. We run out of time to solve this loop. So um, that means the time loop is deteriorating. Each time you go back, you go back to a later point. 
and may run out of time to it may run out of opportunities to solve the problem. So in terms of the, um, so this story will have a bit of a technical trick to it, which is that um, while I may reuse content and repeat scenes, um, the same scene may be stored as two separate videos that represent how you got to that scene. So the first time through We'll call it scene B. Uh, it knows that it's scene B first time. And if you get there a second time, it knows that it's scene B second time, or possibly even knows some of the choices you made along the way. And so that way I may end up be creating more um, videos in the chain, yet the content uh, I may still be able to keep under control. All right, so what is the story here? Um, there needs to be a time loop and a way for the player to get out of it. So the question is, is it a um, time loop mechanism that the player is trying to solve, or is it a um, mysterious time loop and they need to solve some sort of uh, personal issue to get out of it? Um, you know, as the, uh, the Groundhog Day story never had a, an explanation. Um, I think I'm going to go with a, um, a technical time loop. So there's some sort of, uh, science facility doing experiments in time. The Main character is a scientist who gets caught up in a time loop and they have to uh, solve the problem with the device before the loop collapses and, I don't know, ends the universe or something equally bad. I'm going to call this the time lens. Um, uh, to, it's designed to peek into the past uh, for science, archaeology, history. So a tool of knowledge but it rips a hole in time space and creates a collapsing loop of time that will Destroy the world, why not? Okay, so the design of it was never meant to uh, create any sort of actual physical connection. <clears throat> and that's the failure point is that it does. And that means that the uh, person or people caught in the time loop don't understand what's broken, don't know how to fix it. It's not just a simple engineering problem. There is a, a mystery um, involved and... Now, I don't want this to be 
I don't want the story to feel too much like a science uh, experiment. So I want something want an opposing force. So um, there's an opponent time looper trying to change the past, broke the time lens, and will actively work against protagonist fixing it. Yeah, the more I write this time loop story, the more it feels like several different stories I've seen before, but I guess there's a reason lots of uh, people tell these kinds of stories. Um, I'm doing it because of a, a uh, convenience of content creation. Um, so if it's a little derivative, uh, I apologize. I will try to keep some uh, new ideas in here. But uh, to be honest, the new ideas of storytelling are not really the point here. Uh, I'm trying to do new ideas of uh, video continuity. So, the loop consists of some number of events or choices the player makes. At the end of time, they are ejected back on the loop. So, how many choices, how many events, how many scenes? Um, so, I think I want to do this with uh, essentially just five scenes. And each one will have roughly a choice of two to four options for how to proceed. First, pass through the loop has no success option. Or maybe a different way to put that is uh, Success options open up as the hero learns through repetition. So uh, the way I'm thinking about it is um, <clears throat> the character is not initially involved in the time lens experiment. Um, they are caught up in it and have to catch up uh, quickly in order to discover the cause of the loop prevent it, which ultimately means not necessarily understanding the time travel and fixing the machine, but by uh, discovering the opponent character and stopping them from breaking it. So, um, five characters, one is the opponent. Hero must to 
discover the opponent, interfere with their plan. So the idea is that the um, opponent character is putting this plan into motion. There are th things they do along the way that the hero character can discover. And, uh, and by discovering them, they learn who the opponent is and can uh, sort of interfere in the final crucial step. As before, some sort of table to help organize my scenes. For my time loop story, um, I want to keep the cast and locations well contained. Um, I think my storyline uh, can do that. Um, but in order to flesh it out, uh, I need to know a little bit more about these characters. And what I want to do is set it up so that there are multiple uh, suspicious characters, multiple characters with motives. Um, and so I'm going to capture some of my goals. Um, uh, multiple suspects, possibly even multiple antagonists or opponents, calling them. Um, motivated to mess with the time lens. Um, I want a uh, supervisor character who... Other things, when I'm making um, especially small cast games, I want every uh, character to have a name starting with a different letter. This sounds... Uh, really out of nowhere, but uh, I call it the Sauron Saruman problem. Uh, if you've uh, interacted with Lord of the Rings, uh, typically on someone's first read through or watch of the movies, uh, the names Sauron and Saruman get jumbled up and it's because they're so freaking similar. Uh, there are other examples um, where important characters have very similar names for no good reason and uh, I don't know why authors haven't noticed this problem. So uh, certainly when your cast gets big or if there's reasons for people to have similar names like family names, uh, sometimes it can't be helped. But when it can be helped, I try to make it explicit in my character design. Uh, and in addition to starting with different letters, uh, typically try and make them sound different. Um, mix of male and female, roughly 50-50. I am slated to have five characters, but really I'm thinking six works well for this, so I should be able to have three male and three female. Um, and while I'd love to have the protagonist, uh, the hero character, have a choice, uh, that's, if I, unless I can figure out the right way to do it, that's a lot of extra content work. Um, 
I might be able to set it up so that uh, depending on that very first choice they make of which team to go with, um, maybe that slots them into one of two possible heroes. So that would uh, leave my cast at uh, two potential hero characters, one supervisor, and then three suspects or opponents um, in a cast of six. Yeah, as long as I'm vague about who the hero is, or I can make the uh, hero character unnamed and ambiguous, and uh, that might be easier. So, um, so, unnamed hero. And then uh, one red herring. So there'll be one character who can be the uh, maybe look guilty, but can then turn out to be uh, very supportive, possibly someone who uh, the first one to buy into the time loop uh, story. So let's make a table for my cast. Uh, Character, role, motivation, and other notes. Okay, it's actually been a few weeks uh, since I started this process, and uh, I'm making progress, but uh, it's still got a bit to go. Uh, what I have done is uh, I've put together almost all of the script, um, and uh, I've drawn some sets, and uh, now it's time for me to uh, start actually making the recordings that are going to go into the playable prototype of this game. Uh, as with many of my projects, it ended up a little more ambitious, a little more complicated than I would like. Uh, but I've cut out a few things, and uh, I feel like cutting out anything more at this point would make it not even interesting at all to play. So uh, I've kept in there what I think I need, and uh, it's just going to take some time to put it together. And since I started uh, this project, I've actually gotten a new job, uh, which is great for me, but uh, means my videos will come together a little more slowly than I was originally planning. Um, in any case, uh, bear with me. There will be a part two to this uh, when I have more of the process to show. So having gone through the process so far, um, I've already learned quite a lot about what I'm trying to do. Um, the key one that I uh, 
moved away from my original plan is the uh, branching concept. Initially, I was uh, thinking I could do branches using copies of the same video, uh, essentially as, as different links that would preserve the branching information, uh, which could work if I was only doing um, a small number of branches for a very short time frame. Uh, but as this plot came together, I realized that that really was not practical. It would uh, require uh, essentially three or more copies of just about everything I was doing, uh, which felt just a little too cumbersome. So what I switched to was the concept of, uh, in this storyline at least, called, calling them time codes, which are, is information I give to the player that they can record to keep track of essentially some of the major uh, consequences of their game. And then later on when they are choosing a branch, uh, they can take their current time codes into account uh, to choose the branch. Um, and this handles the case of, of preserving uh, past choices the players made um, without the necessity quite so much of uh, multiple copies of identical videos just to preserve that information. Um, also, I've uh, given some thought to simpler storylines, but uh, I've really I've gone so far with this uh, time loop plot that uh, it felt like just pressing forward was going to be the right answer, even though it's going to take me a little bit longer to do it. So as always, let's uh, revisit our game design game game rules. Uh, so one thing I wanted to uh, bring up now that we have a few rules uh, available to us is that you can take the game design game game rules and apply them to any video you watch on the internet in any format. Uh, it might be kind of funny to post your score in a completely unrelated uh, video's comment channel and see uh, what people think of it. And uh, obviously some videos will score better or worse, uh, especially based on how long they are. It's just another way to entertain yourself while you're watching videos on the internet. In addition, uh, I still want to add a few more rules to our repertoire for game design game game rules. So uh, let me bring up the rules page. Okay, so let's first note that general rule that I just brought up, which is you can apply GDG rules to any video you watch. Doesn't really affect our scores in uh, this channel, but I'll make note of it anyway as a reminder. Uh, so we're inventing a rule three, which um, I'm going to call the words per minute rule. Estimate how many words I say in the first 60 seconds of the episode. Not counting uh, um, Anything that's uh, hard to distinguish as a clear word, let's not count that because that will just uh, be confusing. I might do an uh, uh, and that might be two uhs or one uh, let's just skip all that. Go to actual words. If I say a word twice in a row, that's fine. And bonus rule C. Deviations. So this uh, specifically relates to the game we developed today. Um, give it a try, play through deviations, and uh, when you hit a ending success, uh, go ahead and comment in that ending video's comment feed that you made it, and uh, plus one point per deviations success ending you reach and comment okay. 
And as with all bonus rules, uh, you can carry bonus points into every episode going forward. So if you reach several different endings in uh, the Deviations game, uh, those bonus points will carry forward to every episode you score. And once again, the summary page for the rules uh, so far. We have a keyword rule, numbers rule, words per minute we just created, the hello bonus, the discord bonus, and the deviations bonus, which we also just created. That's it for this episode of Game Design Game. Next time, I'll show you my uh, foundational all-purpose RPG rule set called Storyboard RPG, and I'll talk about some of the design decisions that went into making it. Until next time, game design gamers, ciao!